Hello readers, I'm the Avid Reader and today we're reviewing World War Striking the Balance written by Harry Turtledove in 1996. So this is the fourth volume in the World War series where aliens have invaded Earth and humans have to unite to fight against them. And this book occurs in 1944, so you've had so far one and a half year of fighting and now we get to see the last months unfold of this war. We see the aliens and the humans dropping nuclear bombs on each other and we see the fighting progressing as it has the fighting continues until it stops so let's get into this uh, story like in previous videos on this topic i will be doing the race characters first and then the human characters because this is a very character oriented novel and it's 500 pages um, small letters so the highest ranking character of course is atvar who is the fleet lord of the race and he is becoming more and more cynical towards how the war is going on with the second in command the ship lord kirill atvar is kind of worried that if things continue as they are kirill will eventually overthrow atvar so he doesn't really trust his own ship lords now and now he has to consider whether he will create peace or not, having only conquered half the planet. Thus, he has to learn to concede. And the main spoiler in this book is, in the end, he decides, okay, we'll have to negotiate with the humans and see if we can find some compromise. And they will get only half the planet, the lizards, or the race. And that far, he also comes down actually to ground. He comes to visit Northern Africa, he goes to Egypt and visit there he, to be a commander, so-called at the front or something like that. Now for lesser characters, so you got three others, so you got Usmak. So if you remember at the end of the third book, Usmak committed mutiny, killed his own, his commander, and he took over the base. and. Here we've got a bunch of lizards who are high on ginger controlling a base in Siberia. And they threaten that they're gonna surrender the base to the Soviet Union. And of course the higher ops such as Atvar are distressed by this happening. And eventually Usmak decides to surrender his base to the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union promises them that they will get ginger and immunity and things like that. Of course the Soviet Union, we know the reliability, they lie. So they separate Usmak from the other lizards and they want him to talk more and more even if he hasn't really so much more information to give and remember the race collaborates when it's captured but the NKVD torture him nonetheless but the NKVD nonetheless tortures him with strong likes towards his eyes and they use the carrot and stick model with uh, giving him ginger to make him talk He's talking to this NKVD man who has an interpreter. Once he gets a big bowl of ginger, Uzmak is very happy, he takes a lot of it, and he wants to share it with the interpreter. The NKVD man says no, but Uzmak gives it anyway. The interpreter lizard starts having some of it. The NKVD man tries to stop it. And this is when both Uzmak and the interpreter go at him. And here you have a quite violent scene where they tear at him and bite him and they act like animals which they kind of are. Other NKVD men come in, the interpreter rushes at them and is killed. And Usmak, he is sent to the Gulags where he starts working there. He has to chop wood. He is the barracks leader since he is respected among other lizards. He committed a mutiny after all. So they elected him as barrack leader. He has to interact with Soviets, Soviet prisoners, Soviet guards, things like that. And they go on chopping woods. They barely get any rations. And remember this weather is horrible for lizards since it's very cold and they really like war lizards. After a while he stops eating. And one time when he's chopping wood with his other fellow lizards, he excuses himself from the NKVD to take care of his bathroom duties, but instead he just falls to the ground, passes out, and dies quietly. And the NKVD find him and just throw him among the other bodies who have died. So this is a regular occurrence for them. So you can see the cruelty of this Soviet system. And one thing I would praise striking the balance is that it rectifies a lot of the sympathies of communism in tilting the balance. Striking the balance shows several times how communists can really be horrible whether it is the Soviet Union or those in China. So that's one race member dead. 
Then you've got Tirtz, who's a flying pilot in the United States. He's uh, shooting up stuff. They're having less and less ammo they can use. First he's in Florida, then he's in Kansas, then he's in Colorado. He witnesses some um, African Americans being used as soldiers to be used against the Americans, but they actually rebel. So anytime the lizards try to use friendly humans, it actually doesn't really work. They usually turn on them. And one time he is flying outside of Denver, he witnesses a nuclear bomb launched by a human and he loses control of his plane and it crashes into some mountain or something like that, I think. So there are two lizard deaths. And those are actually the only two deaths in this whole story, by the way. So there are no humans who die, but Usmak and Teach are dead. And finally, you've got Tomals, who is this researcher scientist he is taking care of the hatchling, this human baby he has stolen from Liu Han on his ship. He is seeing it grow up. But eventually the communists force them to return the baby to Liu Han. Thomas has done a lot of research, has come very far. The baby already has started to speak in their language, but then he has to return the baby. So he goes to find another baby so they can take. They pay the women this time so they have no problems. But on his way back to base, his bodyguards are shot and he is kidnapped by the communists and is given to Li Han, where they don't really torture him, but they just keep him in a locked hole somewhere in the ground. He can see light, but he can see really what through the window. And so he's a prisoner of the communists. Eventually, they spontaneously just release him and threaten him. You count to 100. Otherwise, you'd be killed. And he goes back to base. He's taken back to the ship and he says he doesn't want to come back to Earth ever again. So those are the characters of the race. Now, moving on to the humans, of course, you know, we have a bunch of them. There's about a dozen or so. So we've got Sam Yeager. He's working as a translator between lizards and humans, specifically on rocket science, since he is with the rocket scientist Robert Goddard who soon will die since he's working himself to death with how hard he's working with his research on the rockets. And if I remember right, Sam Eager actually presses the button which launches one of these missiles. And meanwhile, he's having his son grow up. He's interacting quite often with the defector Straha, the former shiplord who was the third highest ranking lizard among the race. And they're talking and we can see the clash of culture You've got Straha, who really believes in order. He says, if it was up to him, we would really have been harsh on humans and launched a bunch of nuclear bombs. And when the war ends, Straha says, it's not going to be so good here living, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be livable. And the race are content with living among others because they don't demand much from others. Back in China, you've got Li Han, who is rising to the ranks of the Communist Party or the Rebels of the People's Liberation Army. She is interacting a lot with No He Ting, who is this high ranking communist leader. Once He Xie Xiao To, this uh, womanizer, comes to her room and tries to rape her, he fails and she threatens him with death. So he leaves. And here we can see how extreme the communist ideology is because he has to self repent, self abuse himself basically condemn what he has done on his bad behavior and that his lust is bad and he does this in front of the central committee of the local communist branch it's a bit horrifying that even the sex crazed man Hashito really looks at the communist party as a god but Liu Han she's moving up the ranks eventually she comes up to the executive committee or whatever they have there and she becomes independent of Niho Ting Niho Ting himself he questions is it him who's controlling her or her who's controlling him? And he and her, they go to negotiations with the lizards. The lizards tell them to cease their guerrilla tactics and terrorism, and they will not treat them as equals as they have done with others. The other thing has also met with the Japanese, by the way. We understand that communists and those of the Kuomintang are killing each other. That's quite clear, a bunch of assassinations. There's talk a lot about these assassinations committed by communists, uh, plotted by communists, such as Neo Ting. The lizards actually show video of Li Han being uh, raped when she was on the ship, and some men laugh at her and want to have sex with her, but a lot of others start showing sympathy to her, so it backfired what the 
research the Seniyah thing also meets with some Muslims and yeah, a bunch of meetings and a bunch of guerrilla tactics in China. The highest ranking human in point of view we get is actually Vyacheslav Molotov. So, comrade for a commissar of the Soviet Union and he meets with Stalin several times. Stalin always speaks in a way where you're worried for your death. He wants to know the progress of the atomic bomb program. The Americans send one of their nuclear scientists to the Soviet Union where he starts spreading some ideas about freedom and how it's bad, he tells Molotov. This American doesn't really care about what he says. He's an American, he has his free speech. So he says to Molotov, it does not make sense to shoot someone in the back of the neck each time they fail you. That does not work. And that is why you barely have any nuclear weapons and things like that. Molotov meets with Stalin and eventually nuclear weapons progress. They progress a lot more rapidly now with the American there. And eventually they get the nuclear bomb which they use at Saratov and the researchers reply with Magni Katarvats or something like that, some Soviet city. The researchers also dropped a couple of nuclear bombs on innocent cities elsewhere, not as retaliation as they used to, but just to be unpredictable and send a message that they are serious. But eventually the Soviets get their nuclear bomb, they drop it and now they tell the researchers, okay, let's go to the negotiating table, start negotiating a possible peace. Stalin tells Molotov, tell the others that we're going to negotiate for peace and they ought to too, but we're gonna do it regardless of whether they do so or not. So they meet in Cairo, the different foreign diplomats. So as Cordell Hull is president in the United States, now they send George Marshall from the United States. They send Molotov from the Soviet Union. They send Ribbentrop from Germany and then unofficially they have had an unofficial ceasefire with the British and the Japanese. They have sent Anthony Eden from Britain and they have sent Shinigori Togo from Japan and Togo is actually quite reasonable person. All the countries demand that the lizards withdraw from their territories so the lizards agree to withdraw from the Soviet Union, the United States, Nazi Germany, Japan and Britain, but they will not give back the empires that Britain has lost. And there's this negotiation of Poland, what they're gonna do with it. Polotov says we want the eastern half, Ribbentrop says we want everything or we're going back to war. Togo suggests a compromise where the lizards actually stay in Poland as a buffer zone. Molotov thinks it's a good idea. The Ribbentrop makes a bunch of threats that we're going to go back to where we're gonna launch some surprise attack if you do not give us this. But since they don't succeed launching their nuclear weapon plan they had somewhere, it doesn't occur. So you have the peace of Cairo and half the earth is controlled by the lizards and half the earth is controlled by humans. And Moshe Rusi has arrived to Palestine, but he is captured three times. First by the Jewish resistance, he is then released, then he is arrested by the Brits because they don't know what he is. He's a Jew with a gun, so let's grab him. And then he is arrested by the lizards and Zolrag, who has been demoted, he is happy to see him. And he is delivered to Atvar, but Atvar doesn't torture him. He actually uses him as an advisor. And Morshi Rusi returns to the good graces of the lizards and they agree to bring him back to, I think, Palestine. He actually gets to return to Palestine with his family he's actually going to be allowed to become a doctor because he was a medical student previously so he's going to become a doctor who studies both the humans and the lizards. In the United States you've got Hans Orbach, this soldier, officer, captain. He actually convinces this blank Penny Summers to snap out of it and Rachel Hines she joins the army and becomes one of the boys and they fight with the lizards and eventually and eventually Orbach's unit is destroyed and he is almost killed by a chopper but he is brought away by Rachel Hines, he is captured by the lizards and he is crippled and Penny Summers meets him and they start dating clearly and the aliens as they have agreed to withdraw Orbach leaves with Penny Summers to go someplace else they don't want to be in this town with all the crime and things like that. In Denver you've had Leslie Groves who is the leader of the Atomic Project. He meets Cordial Hull after 
Roosevelt dies and informs him of the atomic bomb project and he also meets several time Omar Bradley he gets to witness the battle of Colorado or Denver or something like that they drop a nuclear bomb just outside of it remember what killed Tits you've got another old soldier Matt Daniels who is now a low lieutenant with his similar age in the late 50s sergeant muldoon they meet uh, they meet Patton after a ceasefire and we get to see daniels and muldoon fighting the lizards a little bit and they react to roosevelt dying when they're in a brothel actually back in the uk you've got david goldfarb again as in the first book now he's trying to pick up chicks with the officer basil ronberg but he actually meets a jewish waitress naomi kaplan she's german uh, to the difference of him being Polish. So they start dating, they wait till they get married before they're going to perform the deed. And David Goldfarb is happy, he has this girlfriend now, Jewish girlfriend, Basil Rambush is jealous. Once the lizards agree in an exchange of prisoners, they're going to give a bunch of media of the lizards, so videos of them of back home the planet of the lizards and david goldfarb is among the brits who gets to analyze this material back in pskov you've got george bagdad who is still one of the brits who arbitrates between the germans and the soviets but then some bombing attacks kills kurt Schill and vasiliev and alexander yerman the partisan guy his arm is crushed and Scholz makes it clear that there's going to be fighting between the Soviets and the Germans soon, so they should leave. There was a funny scene in this section of the story. You've got Scholz who's arguing with Tatiana about who should be sleeping with who. Tatiana wants to sleep with Jerome Jones, Scholz wants to sleep with Tatiana, so that's a funny scene, it's interesting. This book actually made me laugh a few times, which, yeah, it's the funniest book in the World War series I've read so far, so that's... That's funny if you want to laugh a bit at this dark subject. There are a lot of dark things like the st barely started Holocaust and the Gulag. So yeah, a few laughs is good for a book. You have Ludmila Gorbunova. She's flying from Pskov to other places in Poland to bring supplies. She meets this German general aristocrat Brockdor Alefeld to ask her to do some runs with her plane to bring some supplies to some places she agrees she land crashes her plane somewhere in the middle of poland it's a bit hard to get it fixed up she gets a new plane from uh, some pole piano player upper class guy and it's a very nice plane much better than the soviet type it's the german type she's flying around she meets jaeger once when she's taking supplies and then she flies to a German base. Again, she wants to meet him. But Jaeger has been arrested. Now, why has Jaeger been arrested? Well, Heinrich Jaeger is being a good panzer commander. He's loved by his crew, by his unit. And he's fighting against the lizards. But he is also brought along by Scorsese because Scorsese has a mission from the Führer to launch chemical weapons into Lodz, where you have all the Jews. And Heinrich Jaeger indirectly indicates to Mordecai Analowitz that the package that Scorsini gives the Jews is a chemical weapon that is going to kill the Jews. So the Jews understand what the chemical weapon is. is. Mordecai and his crew dress as German soldiers and throw a bunch of chemical weapons at the lizards and kills a lot of them. Scorsini explodes at this. This time, the one of the only times he has failed, says Mordecai, he's a big man, but man, I'm not really going to hurt him when I catch him. So he is ordered by the fur to put the nuclear device in Lotz. And Jaeger again indicates to Mordecai and I would, except to another Pole since the SS have already killed the Pole who passed on the information to Mordecai so he passes it on to another one telling Mordecai and I would, that there's some nuclear bomb here you have to take care of this otherwise a lot of people would die so Mordecai they find a the nuclear bomb they get out and hide it and Scorsani declares to Jaeger he's going to go into lots himself and get it and detonate it and Heinrich Heyer, he's with his crew eating and then he is arrested by the SS. But then Ludmila Gorbunova asks where he is, can you get him? So the crew of Jaeger decide we're gonna kill a few SS bastards because Heinrich Jaeger is a damn good commander. So Heinrich Jaeger is brought to her. She has her little Tokarev gun. He isn't at all armed. He brings some syringes against gas and they hop on the plane and decide to go to Lodz, this odd love couple. There they meet up with Mordecai Analowitz and they discuss and say 
we have to find Skorseni and eliminate him because otherwise he's going to detonate the bomb. Skorseni creates an explosion, almost killing Mordecai and Anarowitz. They walk into a trap, Ludmila Gorbunova, Heineke, and Mordecai, Anarowitz, there are three who are going. They found a couple guards dead and they realize they are poisoned by chemical gas, so they put in syringes to make themselves immune for a little while from these chemical weapons. They're trying to find Skorseni in the nuclear weapon. They know where the nuclear weapon is, but Skorseni has beat them to the punch and is preparing it. But he doesn't have time, he gets into a shootout with them. But three against one is what it takes to gun down Skorseni multiple times. He is shot first by one and then he's shot by a couple others in addition. Uh, so. In that way, the nuclear bomb is safe, they leave it among these chemical weapons, which has been discharged, so it will be safe from the detonation for at least a few weeks. Ribbentrop's threat appears then to be useless, that it isn't serious, Atvar is complex by this, so... Yeah, you have the peace of Cairo, and all the countries make peace, the big five, and the lizards withdraw from the territories, but they keep some of the territory ready for a conquest fleet that's going to arrive in about two decades. And then you've got David Neusbaum, you remember him, who was knocked out by Mordecai Anarowitz. We get to see him in the Gulag, and he's first a woodworker, and then he's a political, bringing information to the local commandant. We get to see him rising through the ranks of the Gulag of prisoners. And he actually is the communicator between the lizards and the prison guards. He actually meets with Usmak and the replacement of Usmak after his death is pretty good. And yeah, that's all the characters of the story. And as I said, the story ends with the peace of Cairo where the lizards have withdrawn from the big five territories of Germany, Soviet Union, USA, Britain and Japan. But they keep the empires, they stay in Poland as a buffer, they have Africa, they have Latin America, they have pretty much all of Asia except the Russian part. And yeah, that's how the story ends. So, how would I rate World War Striking the Balance? I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. So, it's a better book than Tilting the Balance. It's a quite good book. I really like how it makes fun of communism and it shows how horrible it is. And it doesn't forget, yeah, Nazism is also bad. So yeah, we get to see how COVID activist ideologies are horrible. And uh, there are some funny moments in this book. The moment where Uzmak kills the guard, that's quite violent. So yeah, it's an overall good book, but there's nothing that makes it great as it was with In the Balance or with Upsetting the Balance, but it's a much stronger good book than Tinting the Balance, as I said. So, a good book, and it's the end of the world war between the lizards and the humans now. So we will see how the uneasy piece in the colonization series, which is three books, and then Home or Bound, whatever that is, follows in this world war franchise. So I'll see you guys for that series soon. So readers, I hope you enjoyed this book review of World War Striking the Balance, which was written by Harry Turtledove in 1996. It got an 8 out of 10, and I will see you readers next time.